Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet, thanks to the marvel of technology, I am coming at you live from a little guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, you're listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station. A couple of quick announcements. Are you a spiritual seeker who is ready to move forward in your life? If you're wanting to shift from struggling to feeling that life is effortless, send me an email to book a free session. I will show you how to move into your RPM, recognize who you are, plug into your real power, and manifest the effortlessness you desire in your life, effortlessness in abundance, in relationship, and to expand into your spiritual journey. Contact me today and let me rev you up. Contact me, send me an email at KeithAnthonyBlanchard.com. This is a very brief brand new program I am offering to the public. Also, if you've been listening to Center of Light Radio for a while, <clears throat> you know that I spent almost all of my time creating and putting out an abundance of information on how to expand one's life into greater degrees of bliss. Now, my center of light beings, I want to provide you with an outlet to plug into my RPM energy grid. What I want you to do is go to centerofLightRadio.com and fill out that sign-up form that you're going to have. Let's see right there. Not only do you get a bunch of free stuff that is coming down the pike, lots of my work, and eventually over time, I'm just going to hand it all to you. You know, I, I realize that this work does not belong to me, and it's not, quote, right for me to hoard it. So not only will you start getting an ongoing um, packet of free gifts, you're going to have access to my newsletter program. October 16th, I just got finished interviewing Swamji Viswayogi, God Realized Man from India. I created a documentary, believe it or not, with my cell phone, and it came out pretty darn good. And it's called Peace, Love, and Unity. That's going to be hitting the public on October 16th. If you want to see the awesome trailer, go to Center of Light Radio on Facebook. Go to Facebook and do the search for Center of Light Radio. Scroll down the wall just a little bit, and you will find this awesome trailer that really supports the power pack, the punch that this movie has about my blessed time with Swamji Viswayogi. My guest today, uh, we're going to be having some dialogue about John of God in South America. And so I know he knows what it's like. He's a my guest today, Joseph, he's a very endowed man himself, but he's going to validate to you what it's like to be in the presence of someone else who is just truly, truly connected. So let's get down to Center of Light Radio because it's time for that kind of business. The number you call in today is 888-919-2355, Let me tell you about my guest today. Joseph Labrudo III is a psychic medium and spiritual healer who has helped countless numbers of people who are grieving their the loss of their loved ones by bringing messages of love, hope, and joy from the other side. Those who meet Joseph can sense that God is working through him as a medium and channel of the sacred. Known for his warm heart and humble nature, I can attest to that, and channel uh, uh, and warm nature, he has become widely known for his ability to predict and deliver startling accurate and precise readings to his audience. Joseph is also known as a direct dial. He is able to connect up to 98% of his readings. Joseph tells people it's like a universal phone book. <laughs> yeah, right. Through his psychic abilities, Joseph is able to see what life has in store for his clients and help them choose a path that leads to the best Outcome. Welcome to Center of Light Radio again, Joseph Labruto, my friend. Oh, it's been a pleasure, um, Keith. It's been a long time, in fact, since I've been on your show, and thank you for having me on. It has been a while, brother. I'm glad you're back and things are kicking for you. How are things doing in Florida? <laughs> we survived the hurricanes, let's just say. Uh, <laughs> we had a big scare when Irma came. Half the population um, pretty much left Florida. Um, but we just had, you know, down trees and power outages, and that's about it. So no structural damage. I, I, well, I should say where I'm at, um, Key West is, and the Keys were different. But where we are in South Florida here up in Palm Beach, we were okay. 
That's good to hear. You've been a busy guy. I just recently saw one of your promo videos, I guess you can call it. Uh, you were you were in some sort of venue, and there were people all around you, and you were doing uh, readings. And uh, the testimony that I'm guessing about five, six, maybe eight people that gave through this video was pretty compelling. Uh, I wish I could have heard more of the readings. So listening on it uh, throughout today's show, Joseph is going to be doing readings here and there. So here's your opportunity to call in. If you have someone in mind, Joseph, how do you want to do this? You want them just, um, you're going to ask them who they want to connect with, or are you just going to intuit that? Or is it easier for you just to get the name from them because it creates a vibrational structure that you can launch, latch onto? How do you want to do that, sir? Yeah, since it's um, radio and we're really pressed for time, um, just let me have the um, relationship like mom, dad, brother. That's all I need. Um, no names. Um, just the relationship um, that the person they want to connect with. You have some, we have someone in the, on hold right now. You want to get right down to it, sir? <laughs> want to go right into it. Yeah, sure. We can go to it. And then <laughs> this way you can get all set up and what you need to do. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, we have Angina on the line from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, Angina, you are on the air with Joseph Labruto. Hi, thank you. Hi, welcome to the show. It's Angela. Angina, yeah. Angela, welcome to the show. Um, we could either um, connect with a loved one or if there's a, a psychic reading that you want, you can ask a question, either one you can do with me. Um, so what would you like to discuss? I'd, I'd like to connect with my parents if possible. Okay, so you have parents that passed away? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Angela. I just want you to close your eyes. I just want you to think of them and bring them into the room here. And what I have is a, a man who just, I have somebody who just passed away unexpectedly. And I just want to see it's more of a male figure. If it's not your parents, it's a male who passed away unexpectedly, maybe heart, um, who had heart trouble or just passed away with heart. Does this make sense to you, Angela? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this your father or somebody else with a heart? Um, my father passed away, but I don't think, I don't know if it was the heart. I don't know the reason. Okay. All right. I have that the heart stopped. That was a heart complication um, that that passed away. You're not you're not sure how he passed away. You said. Okay. Yeah. Who who's Jonah or Jay? Who's the who's the J name? Jay. Um, mm -hmm. Jay is my niece's husband. And what's the name? Jay. Oh, Jay. Okay. So Jay is your niece's <laughs> husband. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let me go back to your father here real quick um, before I go into this. I feel that it had to do so, a matter of the heart, and I'm feeling that it was very unexpected. I felt like it was very quick. He didn't have a chance to say goodbye. Um, I feel like he... <sighs> I felt like he was just too young to go as well. And I just feel like he just had so much to do in this lifetime before passing. Um, one thing, were you, were you far away that you couldn't get there, that you wanted to get there, um, but you couldn't get there or anything like that in time? Or is this your mother that you couldn't get there in time and you were far away? I was there for both. So okay. I, I just okay. couldn't say goodbye to him because he was, yeah. But I was there for both. But you couldn't say goodbye to him, right? Okay. Yes. All right. Well, that's what I have. You couldn't say goodbye to him. Um, what I feel about him right off the bat is um, he wanted to make sure that his family and everything in his family is okay. He always wanted to prepare for his family, and he's happy to give what he had to give. He said, he wants to thank you for being the daughter that you were. He wants to thank you that you had to take care of him in any way as well before his passing um, because I felt like he had to be taken care of. Are you still there, Angela? I was just there holding. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I was just holding his hand while he breathed his last, so. 
Okay. Uh, I reached in time to just hold his hand. Hold his hand. All right. So this is what he's just showing me, that you were there and you were taking care of him while he was passing. And he just wants to acknowledge that um, you're his everything, and he's happy that, that he was there. Okay? That you were there. And okay. that's, that's what I feel from him. Your mother, did, he pass, did your mother pass way before him? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, who's the M? Who's the M name? M? No, mm-hmm. I can't think of anybody. Is there a Michael? Michael? Or something like that? It's Michael in English, but it could be another name like Michael? Nickel? Mm-mm. Okay. All right. Well, that's, yeah. that's all I can get for you right now, Angela. And I thank you for no. calling. Okay. All right. No, thank, thank you, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Jill, tell me right. about tell me about your new book, Speaking to new Heaven. Book, speaking to my new book, Speaking to Heaven. Yes, tell me about it. Oh uh, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of I, I get a lot of questions, especially from clients, and um, about heaven. What is heaven? Where is heaven? What do our loved ones do? Um, about deaths. If, Somebody committed suicide, what happens to them, natural causes, um, signs, where to look for signs, what kind of signs our loved ones come in. I've been answering these questions throughout, you know, my time that I've been doing this work. So I thought, you know, why not write a book on this um, to explain where is heaven, what is heaven, and to explain how to look for um, signs from our loved ones and also about transitions, how Somebody could transition from a suicide or overdose compared to a person who died of natural causes and and the difference between the transitions and explaining that. Also go into grief counseling in the the book to help um, to deal with the grieving process and dealing with the death of a person, too. So... The concept of the book was to answer questions. I even kind of um, tap into religion, um, the chapter on prophets, and um, it's called Prophets and Mediums, where to talk about where the work of a medium is more healing this day and not to reminisce um, 5,000, 6,000 years ago, even almost 10,000 years ago, um, about what mediums are about and look what mediums are doing today and how they're helping people and have been closure. So I go into that and how to shop for a medium, the difference between celebrity mediums as um, from your regular average Joe and what to look out for, what to look out for. Um, there's scams out there, what to look and not to look out for. So that's pretty much what the Speaking to Heaven book is about. I have a dear friend of mine who recently lost someone due to a suicide, and you had mentioned that your book does shed light on that. Can you at least give me some insight for my friend as well as whoever might be listening? Give them some ideas. I know there's probably different variables of outcomes that can happen, but can you give me an average understanding of what one likely goes through who's committed suicide? All right. Well, the misconception is that suicides go to hell. And I have to say, no, they don't go to hell. You know, they're, they're miserable when they're here on this earth. They're unhappy, and they want to end it all. So they kind of take this into the afterlife, this unhappiness. But when they say that your life flashes in front of you, it does when you're in that heavenly realm. They see their lives, but now they see who their life affected by them taking their lives. They see the people who truly love them, how they're affected by this. They go through that remorse of hurting these people. It's a learning place that they are. They're learning about what they did to themselves. Um, They're seeing the people who truly love them. At this time, when I'm doing readings, um, the suicides normally are seeking forgiveness um, from their loved ones. Um, It just helps them to have more of a peace of mind to move further on. When I say move further is that they're in a place of learning. This is where I call. Normally, a loved one will be with them or a spirit guide will be them to assist them to get through this ordeal. But once they move on to that heavenly realm, that means they're at peace and they're okay about taking their lives and they can move further in the process, and we will meet again. Um, I know I may connect to It doesn't take long to connect to suicides when I do this because they are already put into the right place for healing. Joseph, I had a friend of mine a couple of years ago, and I want to ask you your thoughts about how this feels to you. Dear friend of mine, very endowed spiritual man. He was psychic. Oh, God. And, you know, I guess life got to him to some degree, and he decided to take his life. And knowing Richard... He didn't, I I don't 
think he did from the point of view, oh, my God, life is just so horrible. I can't bear it anymore. Knowing Richard, I think he did it from the perspective of, okay, here we are. Here's this situation, and I can't seem to just get a step up. I can't seem to make it work. So I'm going to take myself out from the intention, the intention of rebooting myself. It wasn't from this desperate, depressed place. It was truly a conscious choice that he made, knowing that just basically treating what he did like rebooting a computer. Does that make any sense to you, sir? It, it does make perfect sense because we have free will, and if we want to check out, that's our own business, as long as we don't hurt anybody in the process of doing this when we're checking out. Because... Um, our life is to do with our life, our physical life. The soul is here temporary. The soul lives on. So if he's in a condition where, okay, I had enough. I don't want to go through this life, this planned life, this less than life. But it does affect others. There's a ripple effect. And he has to realize that, you know, family that are still alive, any connections that he still has alive, it does affect that. And that ripple effect caused karmic ties there. But like I said, we have the free will to check out. You don't have to be miserable um, to commit suicide. You can do it like your friend said, but there's still a ripple effect that he has to deal with, um, part of his karmic for checking out early um, and not fulfilling his um, role in this play of life. Um, so he has to go through this karmic um, lesson after his passing. Joseph, if you would, tell me about your abilities, what that all encompasses. You know, it, 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 I have to go um, step, step by step um, how all my abilities came into place. And it started in my, you know, in my childhood I used to see spirits, but I didn't know they were spirits. And um, when my cousin passed away, I became, well, I became a channel first before he passed away. And I, I got fascinated with channeling and to channel spirit guides and angels. I saw a movie called Out on the Limb with Shirley MacLaine where she met this person who's a channel, and he channeled her life to her about what was going on, about things that happened in her past and things that are happening in the future. And it just intrigued me that I wanted to learn that. And I remember taking um, Marilyn Raphael, became, I, she mentored me and took me under her wing, and I developed into becoming a trans channel, channeling my collective. And my first book that you're aware of, Is There More to Life Than What We Know, is a channeled book by the collective, talks us about life and why we're here. So this is where I started out at the very beginning. My cousin um, passed away probably when I was in my late 20s, and he, he died early. He was 34, left behind uh, two children and a wife, and he appeared to me. He wanted to talk to his wife, and long story short, he opened heaven's gates for me where I started talking to other loved ones, and um, so I started to learn to become a medium in 2012, my life shifted again where um, I had the opportunity to go to Brazil to meet John of God. And I wanted to meet John of God to help with my abilities. I was a channel. I wanted him to help me become a strong channel. I didn't think about me becoming a healer at the time. I was told throughout my lifetime from many psychics um, and intuitives that I was to become a healer. Even my channels told me I was to become a healer. But this is like 25 years in the making uh, for me to become a healer. And when I went to John of God and I met John of God, he informed me that I will be coming into my healing abilities to prepare myself um, long story short on this, when I returned to the United States, probably about a year later, I started healing people. Um, it was by accident, um, but now um, they're titling me Joseph Man of God because of all the healing works that I do, plus my mediumship and my channeling abilities. So for our listening audience who is not familiar with who John of God is, could you give them some, some details about uh, just some background on how he came to be this particular f healing figure uh, in South America? Is that right? Yeah. Um, John of God is an incredible healer. He lives in Brazil. He does do tours here in the United States. Um, but five, let's just say 5,000 people a week fly to Brazil to meet this man for healing. He's been on the Oprah show. 2020 did a segment on him. And he's an incredible healer. And he works with his guides um, where these guides are healing people. Um, to meet this man, it was incredible to see all the people there. And um, 
for him to he gifted me these crystals to use to keep in just to keep connection with his guides, his casa, and the energy up. But when I work with my own collective, I call them, I, I heal through my own collective. But he kind of gave me the inspiration um, and the push, so to say, to make me realize that I am a healer and, um, and to kind of um, proceed in doing my healings. Did he actually work on you hands on or hands off or did he just on some level impart you with some of his abilities as uh baseless to make to make an idea just from guru to student? Yeah, we have you know you're in a line with 400 people going through. So, you know, at one time he did grab my hand. Oh, well, the first thing was very interesting because the day first day I was there, I was standing with my guide and we were talking to some people, and all of a sudden I felt a tap on my shoulder. And when I turned around, it was John of God. And he just went, he just said good morning to me and to the group, and then he went into his room. My guy told me that out of 10 years she's been there, he's never came up to her in a group like that. And it's very unusual, because you normally know, mean, he goes and hides before he sees hundreds of people. And, and it's just very unusual. So I went, huh, okay. <laughs> and, but... It was me going through the lines and seeing him, and just he had me go through this lines probably about eight times. It's like twice a day, and I had to go three days, two, four, six times, six times. I had to go through the line, and finally he told me I was a healer, but he kept on saying I wasn't ready yet. I wasn't ready. He wanted me to lay under what, what's called crystal beds to increase my energy. He wanted me to meditate with these crystals that I held in my hand. Finally, um, he said that I was ready, and this is when he informed me that I was to become a healer and to prepare myself. 888-919-2355. 888-919-2355 is the number you dial to get on the air with myself and Mr. Joseph Labruto for a reading, or if you have any question in particular you would like to ask. Joseph, let me ask you, when you about your abilities, uh, though we just talked about that, about your abilities, I know you had, what would you call your your main ability, Clara Audient, Clara Sentient, what would that be? Does that also come with visions? Um, it's got to be, if you're asking my strongest one of the Claire's is Claire Cognance. Um, it's just I know right off the bat um, there. Claire Audient will probably be next in line where I uh, hear and call myself the blind man. I close my eyes and I hear spirit. They speak to me. If I get an um, impression or intuitive hit on something, it's, it's a thought that comes to me or a feeling that comes to me. Clairsentient will run in there. My clairvoyance is, is probably the weakest out of them all um, on everything. Um, but claircognizance is as strong as clairsentience and clair um, out of the clairs. So you doing this out in the field how often per month? And can, can people find you just by going to your website? So in case they want to attend one of your live events, is that something that uh, you have in enough uh, time to someone can go to your site and check it out and say, oh, Jill's is going to be in, per se, Atlanta next month. Can we go? I mean, you, are you booked that far in advance? Um, yeah, I am. I'm. <laughs> Like my calendar is always, I have to start filling January's calendar, put January, February calendar up, but I'm already booked January and February out in advance right now too. I just don't have it listed. I only have it up to the end of the year right now. But yes, um, everything is listed. Um, and most of it is in the in the, in the state of Florida um, that I'm doing, um, but we're 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 going to be branching out pretty soon. I, I'm signing in with an agent pretty soon, and she has ties in Las Vegas. She wants to take me to Las Las Vegas, and um, and then we're going to take some places around the world a little bit. Who knows? Maybe we'll end up in Memphis again. <laughs> Man, yeah, absolutely. Give us a chance to hang out and have some fun. Uh, Joseph, we at yeah. the bottom of the hour, would you give your contact information out to our listening audience so they can find you, your live events, and more about what you're doing and possibly order one of your phenomenal books? I know it has to kick butt. Oh, yeah. Well, I have a bunch of merchandise out there, but OurJourneyOfLife.com or PsychicMediumJoseph.com are two of my um, the website's address, and um, that's probably the best way. Just remember Our Journey of Life or PsychicMediumJoseph.com, and all the information is there, phone numbers, emails, and everything. Today, I'm coming forth to tell you about my lifelong work, this brand new program. Wow, people are 
telling me all about what these teachings are doing for them. And I decided to sit down and put this all together in a package and offer to the public. RPM recognized plugging in manifest. Recognize the dynamic that's happening in the world. Plug into the dynamic that's happening within you. When we'll bring these two together, the outer and the inner world, a third component begins to happen. And that's the phoenix within you that rises up through the murk, through the ashes of our own life. And we begin to expand. Explosive clarity is a powerful thing. Expanded awareness is a powerful thing. Giving you tools, giving you secrets, giving you some amazing wisdom and insights that I will be bringing to you through this RPM program that will help you manifest your life in a holy instant. I've been using these techniques all of my life. And dear Lord, let me tell you, they are powerful. And when you implement this in your life, not only will you be helping yourself to expand and have those things that you desire and deserve, everyone around you will say, what is it you're doing? Can RPM you please share recognize and plug in <laughs> and manifest your life? Go to KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. Send me that email and title it, Keith, I want my free 30-minute session. And we'll get you on your way to an expanded, blissful, explosive, clarity lifestyle. Peace, love, and always remember, living your life. Joseph, let me ask you this. Is there anything you could support our listening audience in if they are interested in becoming a medium? Is it something that they have a, a burning inside of them that says, you know, this is could be your destiny if you choose to? Or what about someone who just likes the idea? Can they possibly punch up on those doors and integrate mediumship? Yeah, everybody has their own levels. It's, it's really on how much you want to put into it. Um, when they say practice, 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 it really is. You, you can't just go in there and do it and don't do it for a while and then get back. Um, you have to really – I find that when compared to how I was when I started 10 years ago, I'm a world of a difference today than I was 10 years ago uh, when I was kind of rough on the edges. So um, mediumship is just listening. I feel anybody can do this, um, but it's like a different caliber depending on how much you work at it. To make a living on it is very hard um, to make a full-time living. That's why you see a lot of part-time mediums out there. Um, but, you know, the sky's the limit. It's really, to, I guess, if, you, if your question is to make a living in doing something like that, it really depends on who, um, word of mouth is where I get most of my um, referrals from, is people who have had readings, testimonials, and, you know, and this is how people hear about me. What is it like to be Joseph Labruto walking into a grocery store? <laughs> And I did, you've got 10 people around you or, or a public event somewhere, a public venue. Have you learned, I'm sure you have, but is it still tough for you to shut that door to where you don't have all these deceased people waiting in line to use this telephone booth just to start yammering at you? Oh, yeah. I, I've come up with a system, <laughs> and I, I, had a, I had to come up with an on and off switch. It was very important. At the very beginning, I didn't have one, and if you asked me when I first started, going through a grocery store, yeah, I see these loved ones following people, and it drove me crazy, and, and I didn't know how to shut this off. But um, it was one late night I was watching television, and the movie Beetlejuice came on, out of all things. And, and when the part they say, Beetlejuice, 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 three times, it hit me that I'm going to have everybody say their name three times out loud. So normally I have everybody count one to ten out loud, say their first name three times. That's my on switch. Um, loved ones will start to come in. and It's like when you took that first reader today, I didn't even prepare myself yet <laughs> to open up. I wasn't even quite open yet. And um, But once I do that, um, then, the, then the on switch is on, and then um, the loved ones will fill in, and I'll start to um, bring them through. And when I'm off, I'll say thank you very much um, for coming out to see me. Joseph, since we have a little, quote, downtime, I would like a reading from you if that's doable. Okay. Um, um, go ahead, sir. You know, put me on the spot here. Okay. No, no. I, no. <laughs> well, first thing, I, you know, like I said, I, I am a medium, but I also uh, I consider myself as a psychic medium, and I see paths, I see avenues that people could take. And with you, Keith, I... I 
you know, the, you have a lot of irons in the fire, and sometimes if we have too many irons in the fire, it's very hard to complete a certain project because you're going into another project. But I see sound, music, well, music and sound, um, with tones. Tones are just very predominant with you and vibration of tones, and it's almost like um, using different frequencies into um, bringing a higher consciousness and working with frequency, I feel, is, is very good with you. It's, it's something that you really need to be doing if you're not doing this already. Um, you ever thought about playing sound bowls at, at times? What was that last word? Playing what? The, the, the sound bowls. You know, that's... <laughs> Dude, you're right on it. I, I really gave that some thought in the last couple days, maybe in the last week, it crossed my mind, but you were dead on it. And I really didn't want you to give me a reading about a deceased loved one. I wanted you to do some intuition about my future yep. work. And one thing that happened when I was interviewing Swamji Bhisva Yogi, uh, a name came to me many, many years ago, Joseph, when I was just got on my spiritual path. I was in a meditation and I heard this higher self name come through and the name was Yah. Na va, ya na va. And those people who have been following me in my work for many years knows that um, I called my spiritual work, my website, even my radio show and when I first started, the Yana O Center of Light, which is a different twist of Ya Na Va, Yana O Center of Light. So when I got the chance to interview Swanji Visva Yogi the other day, I said, can I ask you a personal question? He said, yes. <laughs> so I asked him, can you tell me the meaning of Ya Na Va? And he told me these were seed syllables. Ya is the heart. It's the willpower. Na is the intellect or knowledge. It's the brain. There are three nerve centers, heart, brain, and backbone. And the backbone is va. And he told me these are three seed syllables. And it means the awakening of the Lord within. And to keep in mind, this is what was what was happening to me all those years ago, and he suggested to me that I begin toning <laughs> those mm -hmm. three there particular seed syllables that would begin to continue and exponentiate this unfoldment of my own spiritual expansion. So thank you for the validation of that toning. Yep, that's that's what I see you doing. That's toning. So, yep. Okay. Like I said, put me on the spot. <laughs> I know you were so. doing. You gave me some serious validation, bro, and it means a lot to me. So, Joseph, what about you? When do you ever find yourself getting, you know, we're all so close to our own lives. Do you ever venture out and find one of your friends in the field or someone who may be not so close to Joseph giving you the reading? It's when I travel, I do because here, here in Florida, most people know who I am already. And it's, you know, if they know, it's very hard to, to give me a reading because they already know the aspect of what I do and who I am. But um, if I'm traveling, I may ask who's a decent reading or who's a good reader and find out and get a reading from a stranger. And it's wonderful to, to do that. But, you know, we have to keep ourselves in check. It, we can't read for ourselves. And, and you know, even healings. Now, in the area here, I do go to other people who are Reiki masters and energy healers. And um, just in case if I'm really feeling drained and just need to um, re-energize. So I do go to some people that I know to do that on that. But the readers, I have to pretty much go where somebody doesn't know me to give me a reading. Do you do remote healing or do you do hands-on or both? You know, I do both. Um, I prefer the hands-on um, to do that. The remote, I have more success on the hands-on. I think that's probably why I prefer the hands-on than the remote. Uh, and, um, with the remote, there has been a few people that have been healed, but when I'm hands-on, I, I can be more thorough with the person. I can, um, my energy field is around them. My energy is coming through me into them. So if anything, I would prefer the hands-on or not just actually hands-on. It's just being in the same room because some of my healings groups have been 50 to 100 to 200 people in a room and to 
put hands on for 200 people. It's too much. So I have to sit there and I'll send energy out um, as a wave. I call it an energy wave out into the audience. And that's the way. And it's pretty much like long distance healing too. I can do the energy wave. But when they perceive me and they see me, it's a, it's a whole different thing. Most mediums who can see um, auras and energy tells me that they see this light coming out of my whole body. It's not just from my hands, but it's almost like a rainbow. And it's all just it's just coming out and protruding all out of my body and going like a big sound waves. Again, 888-919-2355, 888 is the number you dial. If you want to be on Center of Light Radio, speak to myself or Mr. Joseph Labruto, Psychic Medium. Joseph, from the chat room, we have someone by the name of Sunray who asked a question that they would like to hear stories about how, or at least something, about how our soul lives on. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, we have to realize that, um, you know, we're energetic beings in, in, in this physical body. And if you just kind of look at a, a puff of smoke or steam evaporating from the water, visualize that as a soul continuing. And it's a consciousness. It's a thought. And this thought is what lives on. It's the, th- it's the thinking. It's a thought of being you. So in this heavenly realm, so to say, it's a higher frequency, a higher dimension. Mention, um, you're not a physical being in this heavenly realm. Your thoughts is what's manifesting you. So this is why some people look young or are not like like another person um, is because our thoughts is what created creates everything. Our environment as well. What we love, our passion, is all created with the thoughts. So it's an ultimate fantasy for our soul um, to live on. Is all created by our thoughts, and this is how the soul lives forever. Um, Many lifetimes you can spend here on this earth, um, or if you want to spend lifetime elsewhere, um, the universe is infinite, um, you can spend lifetimes elsewhere as well, or you can be helpers um, in that heavenly realm, too. (sighs) From the chat room, Alice Verney asked a question, I wonder what his folks were like what his folks basically were thinking, having a child who claims to see spirits. <laughs> How was that for you growing up, bro? Yeah, well, my father used to yell at me a lot. He used to, I used to be up at night talking and laughing, and he's screaming, saying, go to sleep in there, who are you talking to? And, and I'm thinking, you know, he let everybody in the house, and he's screaming at me. And um, my mom used to tell me that I used to tell her things, um, even future things. Um, I used to just kind of blat out and tell her, you know, things like if somebody's going to pass away or um, things are about to happen in the world. And so, but it's my mom was used to this because um, in her family, it's it's tradition for her. I, I am Italian and Spanish. I'm half Puerto Rican, and on the Puerto Rican side, I have great grandparents that are like me, a great grandmother, I should say, and aunts and uncles, and even cousins who are just like me. So it's quite norm uh, about my childhood about the things I was going through. Um, even her brother, my Uncle Jose, told my mother when I was born that I, I was gifted and to prepare, um, that I was going to be a very gifted soul. Her sister, who's my TTN, is a channel, and my mom's so funny. She said, you know, all of a sudden we're talking, and all of a sudden her voice gets deep like a man, and she starts to talk about you. I said, Mom, that's called channeling. And um, so and she's telling my mom about my <laughs> life and about how I'm going to be. This is before I was a healer, and I was just becoming a medium, but how I was going to be on television and doing this work and, um, and all this stuff she's telling my mom. So, yeah, so like I said, on that side of the family, it's quite normal. On the Italian side, like I said, my father, he calls me an entertainer. Um, he says, you make them laugh, you make them cry. As long as you can make a living out of it, I'm okay with it. Um, he watches the Long Island Medium on TV, so he gets a big, he gets a grasp on what I do from watching her. <laughs> that's awesome. That's just awesome. Uh, from the chat room, we had a good chat room tonight. Uh, Tommy asked a question. Hey, Tommy says this is a great show. Uh, another question is, do you do you have a system that you can somewhat share with our audience? Just a basically one, two, three startup kit that someone can begin to dabble, put into practice, opening some doors. 
Um, for, for to to mediumship or to channeling, which what which is many doors to open, to healing, mediumship, to mediumship, channeling. That's what I'm assuming. Um, it's it's all code uh, for one's things. Um, what you can do is get, have a code book together where you get in touch with. I call my guides. I call my collective. When I started doing my mediumship work, I was a channel, and my collective helped me become a better medium. I don't need to channel my collective now to bring the loved ones. Before, when I first started, I used to blindfold myself, and my collective would come through and then bring the loved ones through. That's how I first started. Now I'm just out there unblindfolded. And when I use um, codes and guides, like for instance, if I see the Empire State, or if I see the Statue of Liberty, automatically I know they're immigrants and they're on the registry and they've come through. Um, Empire State Building, I know they're from New York City. Um, or the, And then when I see Buffalo, New York, then I know they're up from um, that area. Um, Twin Towers takes me um, into, like, there's twin in the family. I just have just different things that run through my head that are shortcuts, short codes. Um, sports teams is pretty much my thing. Um, I, if I see the Red Sox, okay, you're from New England. I try not to say Patriots too much, but I, I'll go with the Red Sox. And, <laughs> you know, and then um, and that's how I, if I see the um, Cardinals, Arizona Cardinals, anything in Arizona, so, so. You know, I use baseball a lot and football, <laughs> coach, too. <laughs> Love it. We have Renee so, on the line. Brings, you ready for another reading, so, sir? So, yeah, I can I can do uh, We can do that. <laughs> Dig it. Renee, welcome to Center of Light Radio. You're in the air with myself and Mr. Joseph Labruto. Hello. I'm excited about the reading. Um, I loved what you did with Keith about, you know, the future and so kind of what's on his path ahead. So that really mm-hmm. intrigues me. Oh, so you want to know about your future. Where are you calling from, Renee? What state? I'm calling from uh, Florida. Bingo. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Calling from Florida. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, um, well, what I feel about you, Renee, is that um, sometimes we do stuff for a living that we have a passion to do other things, but we have to do to make ends meet, and it's very important. But I feel that you're a very caring person. I feel that you, if you had to work maybe around children or um, young adults or um, inspiration, I feel like you're a very inspirational person, a very inspiring person. Um, words of wisdom comes through you. Um, writing comes through you, too, um, where you can inspire and, and inspirate also as well. Um, I don't know if you're in this type of field, but you ever thought of doing some type of counseling or anything like that? Yes, actually, I um, I do marketing for spiritual people, and I'm I'm branching into coaching. I actually kind of put it on go. hold for a little while, and I I just literally yesterday said I'm going to start up again, and I put something out on Facebook. So I, okay. I definitely am interested oh. in that. Yeah. Well, well, that's what I feel more. Coaching fits right in the counseling part and um, directing people's lives. And so, well, if you do marketing for spiritual people in your Florida, make sure, I don't know if you're on my Facebook or not, but drop me a line because I'm always looking for a marketer. So, uh, take that. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. Anything else you you want to share with me? Um, like I said, I feel like uh, this, the, your soul is very, very giving soul, very loving soul, and you can help a lot of people um, by doing your coaching. I feel that there's groups, though, um, that you're going to be working with, um, inspiring young young adults or even young teenagers where um, even in the spiritual side of things, opening up classes to um, where they can um, grasp onto their own spirituality to um, learn about their own gifts. I feel like you're very, you're very strong in that area too. Thank you. That, that is great to hear. That does sound really interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Renee, for calling into the show. Thank you. Yes, Joseph, thank you. I have a question from the chat it, yeah. room, and I wanted to ask you your thoughts about it. Someone, Michelle, yeah. asked a question, how do you keep spirits at bay who are restless? Is it, you know, there, there's mixed ideas or mixed feelings in the spiritual movement. Some people say you put a protection, and some say actually putting up a wall of protection is creating an intention to attract to you the things that you were affirming that you have a reason to put up a wall. 
versus putting up a field of peace, which accomplishes the same goal, but it's a different harmonic, it's a different tone altogether. What are your thoughts about that versus putting up a wall to keep myself protected? Does it actually bring to you proof that you need a wall to protect yourself versus just using uh, an energy field of peace? What are your thoughts about that, sir? Okay. Um, well, you know, it depends on the environment on this, too, because um, if I'm doing ghost investigations, um, I always have to put that, wheel, that wall up to protect myself. Um, there's a lot of um, negative or heavy energy out there um, that will adhere to me, and if I don't put that wall of protection, it makes me nauseous. It'll make me sick for weeks. I try not to do that many investigations because sometimes I, it's like getting the flu afterwards where I'll have to miss a week or two of work because of just doing this one investigation and, and it just became it's not worth it anymore. Um, so that's where I use my protection. Now, spirits out there, you know, some some are weary, some are lost souls, who I call them, will call upon me, but I have their... For them to call upon me is when I have their loved ones with me. It's the loved one's energy that brings them into the room to me. I'm not the type of person where I consider like a ghost, ghost whisper, where I'm walking down the street and all of a sudden this lost soul comes up and says, you have to find my mom or you have to find my parents or my wife. That I'm completely shut down to. I feel that um, it's very draining for me, and um, so I, when I'm off, I'm off. And you can call that a, a wall of protection around me when I'm off, um, but I do this so I can conserve my energy. So when I have that individual come to meet with me, for instance, if they have somebody who committed suicide and who's, um, or was murdered and had a stressful um, death, then I can bring those the spirit at ease. And normally they come through at ease and at peace through me because they can tell their loved ones that they're okay and they're at peace. So they do come through where I don't have that wall. But there's other conditions where I put the wall up, if that makes sense. Absolutely. We have so many questions. People are just really digging your presence here in the center of light radio. My guest today is Mr. Joseph Labruto. Someone asked a question. Uh, let's see if we find the right one. I'll just... What is the first thing we experience when we pass? Well, you know, there's different transitions and different passes, so it depends on um, the way the person passes. For instance, if somebody um, is dying of natural causes, they're, have, they're in hospice, um, the family's around them, it's a matter of peace, it's drifting off to sleep, and then when they wake up, they find themselves, when they say floating around their body, yes, they're floating, they see their loved ones, but they can hear the voices of loved ones who are crossed over. Normally, the loved ones that are crossed over will do some reminiscing for instance, I'll use an example of a husband and wife where um, maybe the husband has passed first and would be there for the wife, and they will go back. He will take her back in time when they first met, maybe before they were married, when they first met or dating, and that would be their heaven at the very beginning, their youth. And that's an experience where natural causes or peaceful type death on their you know, if it was a tragic, maybe auto accident or something like that, and unexpected very quick, and they feel like they have unfinished business, and it, it, they, they kind of hang around, they tag around a, a little more, they're more earthbound, it takes a little longer for the transition. Um, they just want to make sure their family members are okay. I do a lot of home parties, or I go, uh, go to a home, and there's a lot of activity in the house where their loved ones, they're not haunting the house, they're just um, around their loved ones, and um, the transition for them takes a little longer. It's like one foot in here, one foot in the other door. They can leave anytime they want, but they choose not to because they want to um, comfort their loved ones here. So I, I get that a lot, too. And those are two little two different examples about transitions. Do you think that some cultures are more receptive to alternative healing than others? Oh, yeah, um, um, definitely. Um, I was invited to Brazil um, last year um, by healers, 
um, they found out I was doing incredible healing work here in the United States, and um, we had like 500 people come out. Uh, plus, uh, there was just five of us healers up there, and um, and it was very open in Brazil for for the natural healings like this. Here in the United States, everything's more conventional um, type medicine, and the Western, you know, it's just it's very hard with the Western medicine to be open. Um, but I feel that sometimes when it's last hope. Um, they have, you know, the doctors have given up on them. They're more receptive to this type of healing than I do because they really want, they don't want to go, and they're giving their faith in God. And I, I tell people God heals through me, and really it's having faith that you can be healed. Once you have that faith, we can heal ourselves. Center of Light Radio, my guest today is Mr. Joseph Labrudo. Um, from, the, from the chat room, Philip asked the question, how do you prepare for a healing session, Joseph? For a healing session, I do a meditation before I see my client. I ask for um, my collective, my guides, my healing guides to just, I, I resonate with them. There's, okay, there's, there's two. There's, two. there's the group healing and there's the individual healing. When I do the group healing, um, I, have everybody, I have everybody sit into, into a circle, depending on the size of the group, and I go into a meditation where um, I walk in a circle, in a vortex, clockwise vortex. What I'm doing is I'm building energy up, and um, I have the people um, use affirmations when they're healing. I use the words I am. I am means God's strength in every healing. So for instance, um, if I bring God's healing into the group, I have them project the color red coming into the crown chakra at the top of your head. I want everyone to say out loud three times, I am healed. You're putting it out to the universe, I am healed. You're bringing in that loving red energy of healing through you, and you're giving your trust in God that you will be healed. Um, Raphael, the color is green. I am healthy. Yeshua, golden yellow. I am healthy and well. Um, Kuan Yin, the color is pink. I am loved. So these are the masters that I work with, and this is how the healing is done. To prepare for this healing, I, I do go to a quiet place. I do meditation first, and I, I, I kind of balance myself um, and before I go into the room. And then this was my, my healing techniques that I do with people. Very, very cool. I really loved what you uh, vi gave the visualization you gave me of the colors, and I love the Kuan Yin, the paint. That just moves me. Uh, imaginary Wizard asked the question Are psychics seeing an imprint of our future that has already existed in some other dimension? Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> I know. We're going to go dimensions. You know, it, 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 it could, you know, when you mention other dimensions, um, there are psychics that could see beyond other dimensions. But then, you know, if it's another dimension, it's, a, it's another aspect of who we are, and it's it's another part of us. So there are psychics that can see other dimensions, another aspect of who we are. And I have to go to Star Trek sometimes with the alternate universe um, theory um, for that. Um, but when I do my life path personally, I stay into this environment, this third dimensional frequency, because this is their life. This is their life path here. And I don't want it, I'll start to it'll be confusion to go into another dimension, another reality, another outcome for them and see that in another reality where it's not in this reality. So it's important to stay in this reality to see their outcome because it's their play of life here. But it is possible to see other outcomes, but that is different lives and different realities. We have a couple more questions well, from the chat. That's a topic for another book. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we had a couple more questions from the chat room, and it bring us right to the top of the hour. So give me some, a quick answer, if you would. Someone asked the question, do you actually get a night's sleep? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that actually is pretty good. <laughs> no. <laughs> like I said, I, I have my off switch. And once I turn myself off, yes, they leave me alone. I'm, I'm at peace because um, I, when I'm on, they come to me. But when I turn off and I say good night, I make sure my guides are. They kind of put a wall up around me so I'm not disturbed. Now, at my beginning stages, that's funny. We asked, did I get a night's sleep? My guides used to wake me up four in the morning. This is when I'm a father of four children. They're all grown now, but when they were young, the only time I had peace in the house was like th like two, three in the morning. But all of a sudden. And four in the morning, wide awake, and this is why I started writing my book, Is There More to Life Than What We Know? 
till six in the morning when the alarms go off for school. And so, yeah, I didn't get much sleep uh, <laughs> in my early stages, but now I sleep like a baby. I'm good. Dig that. It was sort of the same way for me when all this began to, when my skull cracked up and, and everything, just like you described, there's a phone booth and everybody's right. waiting. Right, you're, you're getting all these downloads and right. it's hard to sleep with all these downloads and <laughs> you want to journalize, you want to write everything, but but I, I guess that's the beginning of school for me for this and now now it's just all retained and they let me be. <laughs> uh, Beatrix asked a question, who assigns us our spirit guides? Well, I would say the guides pretty much pick us instead of um, them being assigned to us. They resonate to our vibration. Um, they resonate to our path. And um, for instance, for instance, you're a musician. You have guides who are also musicians to inspire you. Uh, I am a writer, so I'll have guides who are writers as well to inspire me. Um, the guides are, are attracted to. Uh, to us because they're on a similar path than us. They have a lot of similarities. We outgrow our guides. We don't always have the same guides that we begin since birth, except for the control. Um, the controls are always with us. And, um, and then, um, like, my gu- when I first started, I had the three amigos, I called them. It was pa- my, my control, <laughs> Patrick, and then I had Indigo and Sparrowhawk, and I was channeling them for years, and all of a sudden, uh, a female slipped in, Genevieve, to talk with my daughter. Um, that was, like, maybe three years later. And then at about 10 years of channeling, then I had the master Yeshua and Joshua come in, but it took me 10 years of channeling to get to that stage. Um, Now, um, within this past three years, I have a whole slew of healing, like Kuan Yin, Michael, and all these healing guides are now coming as part of my collective to work with healings. So, you know, I got the collective who gives readings. I got the collective that teaches, because I do what's called channeling the Ascendant Masters, where I give readings. Um, for instance, as, as on my Facebook wall this morning, um, or last night, somebody posted that I was channeling. Uh, she came to one of my channel sessions, and I predicted that her daughter would be born on October 8th. And it was like a weird day, because I think she was supposed to be born like October 16th or something like that. I said, no, she's coming on the 8th. And she posted, Joseph, you're right. She was born on the 8th. And I don't even remember giving that reading because I was channeling, but I guess I did. <laughs> so, but yeah, but that's, that's, that's how it all works. Finally, from the chat room, I think it's pronounced Chinderic. She asked, she, he, this person asked a question. Do psychics have the ability to foresee their own death? I know I don't, thank God. I wouldn't want it. <laughs> so, I wouldn't want it at all. Yeah. <laughs> I know um, it's very hard for us to read ourselves. Like it's, we always have to get another reader. Um, but there are some strong psychics that have um, intuitions about their own death. I wouldn't say every psychic is like that. It's almost like maybe if it's a need-to-know basics that – they see their death to get preparation for it, that they have to finish up what they have to do before their death. Um, It may happen. I don't think it's, I think it's rare um, that they can, but I think it's all possible, but I don't want to see my own death. (laughs) Agreed. Joseph, thank you for being such a wonderful guest here in Center of Light Radio. Would you leave leave our listening audience with your contact information one more time, how they can find you and possibly attend some of your events? Yeah, um, the website is ourjourneyoflife.com or psychicmediumjoseph.com. My phone number will be listed on there and email address, too, to contact me. Um, you can talk to my assistants. And I pretty much, my office is in South Florida for private sessions. But I do phone readings and Skype readings all around the world. And hopefully I'll be coming. If you want me to come to your area and you have a, a store or, um, that can host me, reach out to me and I'll be happy to come to your area. Joseph, again, thank you, my brother. I appreciate you being here. Always welcome, sir. A, it was a pleasure, Keith. Thank you for having me on your show, and you Absolutely. take care. Everyone, Mr. Joseph okay. Rudo. Um, next week, we're going to have a powerful show for you. I don't have my note who's here, but I know it's a powerful guest. Center of Light Radio. Every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, our RPM project. If you're a spiritual seeker who is ready to move forward in your life, forward in your life, life to shift from struggling to feeling that your life is effortless, contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at Gmail, and I will provide you with a free session 
a free session to help rev you up and move, move into the expansion of your life. The expansion of your life. While you're at centerlightradio.com, the opening page, you will see a sign-up form. Fill it out. I will send you tons of free gifts. Not only free gifts, you have access to my newsletter program. Always remember, ease into bliss and peace, love, and light to you.